Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be talking about is the HTML5 Geolocation API which you can access via JavaScript. So this API, you use it when you want to get accurate information about the current location of a user and the way it does that is by using information available to a user's device. So if a user has a smartphone with GPS enabled, you will be able to get a very accurate reading of the user's current location. If they don't, the Geolocation API can still get a pretty accurate reading based on the user's Wi-Fi signal and others in the area to estimate where in the world the user is currently located. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be manipulating my current location. You can do that in the browser by opening DevTools and then clicking on the three dots tab, then going to more tools and then selecting sensors. So this will give you access to the geolocation sensor and you can override it with some presets. So for example, you could say you're in Berlin and then it's going to set your geolocation to the correct latitude and longitude. Okay, so I've manually set the current position to Berlin. Now let's start coding and use the geolocation API to derive my current position of Berlin. Okay, so the functions that you need to be able to get the current location of the user are located on the global window object under navigator.geolocation. And there are two methods there of interest. So the first one is get current position. This is going to get the current position of the user just once. The other one that you may want to use is watch position. So this will get the user's current position and it will continue getting the user's position so that if the user changes position, the coordinates will update. But before attempting to get the user's current location, it's a good idea to check that the geolocation API is available for the user. So a little bit of code you can write to check that is to write an if statement checking if navigator.geolocation exists. And you actually want to check if it doesn't exist. So if it doesn't exist for the user, then you'll want to throw a new error because there's nothing you can do with the geolocation API for this user. And in the error, you might want to write something like no geolocation available. Now, it's actually quite rare these days that the user won't have the geolocation API available, but it's nevertheless good practice to make your code backwards compatible. So assuming that no error was thrown, you can now start using the geolocation API. So let's start with the get current position method because of the two, this is the simpler method. It gets the user's location just once. And I'm going to delete the reference to window because it's on the global window object. Okay, so get current position, it accepts three arguments. The first one is a function which will fire if the coordinates of the user are successfully retrieved. The second argument is also a function which will fire if the coordinates are not retrieved for some reason. And the third is an object where you can specify some options about how you want to retrieve the location of the user. Now, because the arguments are two functions and an options object, it could get very messy inside the get current position method if I were to define them inside there. So what I'm going to do instead is define each of those externally to the get current position method. So I'll create a success function, an error function, and I'll create an options object that will be initially empty. So first of all, if the success function is called, it means that the coordinates of the user have been successfully retrieved and the get current position method will automatically pass in an object into the success function when it calls it. And we can take a look at the details here. So this object will have on it the information about the current location of the user. So there's actually quite a lot of information on it, but the most important information most of the time is going to be the latitude and longitude of the user, which as you can see, corresponds to the values that we have for our location in Berlin. Now, another very important bit of information here is the accuracy. So this specifies the accuracy of the current location within a number of meters. So we know that the user is at this 
latitude and longitude within 150 meters. So the accuracy value, it could be useful if you want to convey the amount of certainty you have about the current location of the user. So this is a bit more advanced. In this tutorial, we'll just be working with the latitude and the longitude. So to access them, they are available on a property on the object called chords. So to access them, I'll start by getting the latitude value. So that's going to be available at cost chords dot latitude. And we also want the longitude. So that's also located on chords under longitude. So something you might want to do with these coordinates is to feed them in to a mapping API. So I'm going to create a very basic example here where I feed this information into OpenStreetMap. So this is a free mapping service. So I have a link to be able to map the current location where you enter first the latitude and then the longitude. So I'm going to create a link element out of this and set the href to this URL and then enter the current coordinates that we've detected dynamically. So the first one is the latitude. So I already saved that in a variable called lat. And then longitude is the second value. Now, in case you're wondering, this map equals 16 value. This refers to the zoom. So you can play around with that. And the zoom level, I'm going to keep it as it is. And I'll enter some text here about the current position. So I'll enter the latitude value. And then after that, the longitude. And when the user clicks on this information, it's going to take them to the OpenStreetMap. So I'm going to create a div to write this output to. And then here under this markup that I've created, I want to select that new element that I just created by its ID, which is output, and then set the inner HTML to the markup that I just created. So this should hopefully be working now. It's telling me that my latitude and longitude are the positions for the Berlin location and if I click on it, it's showing me my current position, which I set to Berlin. So this is how the geolocation API works, if you can get the coordinates of the user successfully, but that isn't always the case. So for example, you need the user's permission to get their current location. So if the user doesn't give that to you, then an error will be thrown. So that is not a rare occurrence at all. So you want to handle that appropriately. So first of all, let's take a look at what's passed to the error function when there is an error. So I actually want an error to be thrown this time. So what I'm going to do is to set my current location to no override. So that's just going to use the actual location. And I'm going to deny geolocation access to this page. So now when I refresh, you see that I'm getting the geolocation position error object through. So it's telling me that I'm getting a code one error, user denied geolocation. Now there are two other types of error that you can get. So you want to handle this appropriately. The first one, which we just got was permission denied. You can also get position unavailable and you can also get a timeout. So both code two and code three are technical errors. Whereas one is because the user has denied you access to their location. So in terms of handling the error, I would suggest doing it like this, writing an if statement, checking for code one. If that's the case, then you might want to ask the user to allow access to their geolocation. Otherwise, it must be a technical error. So in those cases, I would write a message alerting the user that the position is currently unavailable. So that is how you can make your response to the error conditional upon the type of error. So let's test it out. If I refresh now, it tells me that I need to allow access to geolocation. 
So I'm going to set my position to Berlin again and then allow access for geolocation. Now, if I refresh, you see it's getting the latitude and longitude values of Berlin once again. So we've coded the success and the error function. The final thing you might want to include is some options which you specify in the options object. So these are optional. The geolocation API will work without them, but there are some settings here that you might find useful. So there are three options that you might consider setting here. The first one is enable high accuracy. So if you set this to true, what you are doing is you are sending a signal to a user's device that you want the most accurate information possible about the user's current location. So if it's very important to you to know the exact location of the user, for example, if you're designing a running app, then you would want to set this to true, but it does depend upon whether the user's device has access to more accurate tracking. So if the user doesn't have access, then this won't make any difference. If the user does, then you can get more accurate tracking. The second option that you might consider setting is timeout. So this is the amount of time that you are willing to wait in milliseconds before the coordinates are successfully retrieved. If they are not retrieved by that point, then an error will be thrown. So if I set this to zero, and then we go back to the browser and I try and run it, it's telling me that position is unavailable because the position could not be determined in zero milliseconds. If I set that to a thousand, then that's enough time for the position to be retrieved. Now by default, the value is infinity, so there's no timeout set there. Maybe a sensible timeout would be something like 5,000 milliseconds. Finally, you might consider setting a value for the property maximum age. So this is a value in milliseconds for how long back in time it is acceptable to get a cached position from the user's browser. So for example, if you set this to, let's say 10,000 milliseconds, then it means you're willing to go that far back in time to get the user's location. So by default, maximum age is set to zero, which means you'll always be getting the user's current location. You'll never be shown a cache position. So unless you want cached positions to be valid, you actually don't need to specify a value for maximum age. Okay, so you've seen how get current position works now. So as soon as it's called, it attempts to get the current coordinates of the user and it doesn't update that. So if I change my position to San Francisco, I need to refresh the page in order for the latitude and longitude to be updated. Now, in some situations, you might want to get the coordinates of the user in real time. So it updates every time the user moves location. So the coordinates change. And for that, you can use the watch position method. So it works in exactly the same way as get current position. It takes a success and an error function and an options object. So let's see this now. If I change my position from mountain view here to something else, say London, you see that the coordinates are updated and that's because the success function is being called every time the user changes location, which is getting the new latitude and longitude writing that into the markup and then writing that into the DOM. So watch position, it will continue tracking the location of a user until the user stops you being able to access their location or you ask it to stop in your code. So if you want to do it in code, the function that you want to call is the clear watch function. So it's available on navigator.geolocation and then you call clear watch passing in the ID of the current watch that you wish to cancel. So to get that ID, what you have to do is save the return value of watch position when you call it. So you can do that by saving it to a reference. So that's going to be available as ID. And then you pass in that ID value into clear watch. So it knows to stop watching. Okay, so now even though I'm calling watch position, it's going to clear watch after the first successful coordinates are located. So it's not going to update the position of the user now. So you can see even though I'm changing location, but if I remove that, 
then you see that the location is once again being tracked. So this is how you can use the geolocation API to get the current position of a user and also get the updated position if the user moves location. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video because it helps with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.